There we go. It's finally connecting everyone. Hang on. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, welcome to Deep Dive with DUI um, for August, uh, for the first Thursday of August. Um, so hopefully everyone's been enjoying their summer, getting out and uh, diving and um, or, or hiking or whatever your, your passion is. But I know that most of us here are probably divers or do something with the ocean. So, so hopefully you've been getting out and doing that. Um, so, we are uh, streaming this on Facebook. Um, so if you are on Facebook, um, please um, post any questions in the comments area and we will integrate those into our presentation. If you are on Zoom, um, it's best viewed in the speaker view so you can see them, see the speaker or the presentation in full screen. Um, and, uh, and again, please ask any questions in the um, comment or chat area of, of Zoom and we will answer those also. So with that, let me, I need to switch over. We're starting to, everybody's jumping in. Um, so it's, yes, it's kind of towards the end of the week during the middle of the day. I know not, not everybody can just jump on and view these because um, everyone's getting back to work. Um, but hopefully you can come back and watch the full thing if you are just stopping in for a little bit while you're in the office, um, view the whole presentation. So today, um, we, our presenter is Rocio Bunker, and me. Uh, I need to also add her as a spotlight. So there we go. So there's Rocio, and Rocio, you, you can unmute yourself. But Rocio is going to present today on, on reef.org. It's basically learn everything or anything about your local reef <laughs> or more. Um, for some of us, that's um, why we take photos is because I look it up later. <laughs> um, so Rocio, um, a little background history on Rocio. Rocio's been certified over 20 years ago in her hometown of La Paz, Mexico. Um, so she's a longtime diver. Um, she is um, she's a course director, Patty Scuba um, instructor, trainer for Ocean Enterprises. She's um, with a local dive shop in San Diego. Um, she's been doing some stuff where we're getting the IDC stuff in San Diego now. So you don't have to go up to Santa Clarita um, to go through that whole process. So she's a huge advocate for diving in our area. And so much so that pretty much every day she goes out and, and goes to the ocean at least, if not diving, and then posts a live stream video um, report on what the conditions are of that day. So it's kind of nice. I check in on it all the time and go, oh, I have to go to work. <laughs> so, and I'm not as dedicated to get up at, at five o'clock in the morning like she is to go out to the ocean. I'm more like go after work. So, so with that, I'd like to welcome Rocio. So uh, welcome. Are you, Thank okay, you. so there is audio. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> hey, this is Rocio with the San Diego Dive Report. <laughs> there you go. Wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> this is yeah, not that I report. <laughs> um, so hopefully, uh, I don't know if you got out in the water this morning or not, but uh, oh, no. I skipped it because I saw that it was going to be like big. Well, not big, but it was going to be about like four feet. And I've been looking at some other people uh, reporting their dives and they talked about like really, really cold and very low visibility, at least in the shallow area. And I've been interested in going and seeing uh, some of those stope sharks. So my latest has been like free diving throughout the week versus like diving just because of those, those stope sharks don't come here that often. So, or, or not as much as they're in numbers right now. So it's kind of like, you have to kind of wait. Right. For those of you who aren't local to San Diego, um, one of the, I guess the privileges, luxuries that we have is just minutes away from most of San Diego County, we can go to La Jolla Cove and La Jolla Shores. And right now we, there's an annual migration of, of leopard sharks in the shallows um, where the, the females come in and whatever they do. 
um, but they hang around. It's it's really awesome to see that. And then the taupe sharks coming in their in their groups. Um, a taupe shark is like a reef shark. Um, they kind of swim around in little groups, and um, it's kind of fun to see all the different sea life. Um, and we also have green sea turtles, um, which I still haven't actually saw live. Um, <laughs> well, I, I know that's fix that. I know. Uh, Why are you broken? Because I'm. I don't know. A snorkel in me oh. is just doesn't. No. I'm like, no, I'm just going to put the tank of air on my back and go down to 60 to 80 feet and see the things down deeper. But one of these days. Um, okay. So it's, it. We have to fix it this year. We're yes. Gonna have to like say, hey, Jack, meet me up, and then we're going to go and find it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So before we get started, um, okay, I'm getting phone calls from work. Um, anyways, <laughs> before we get started, Rocio, the question I have for you is, what is your passion about scuba diving, diving? What, what is it that, I mean, obviously you're a diver, you're, you're into this, but what is, you know, your, you know, what makes you go every day to the, you know, to the ocean, the dive or to be a, you know, course director. So what, what is that? It's, oh my gosh. Well, um, it's beautiful. There's nothing, nothing above water that looks as good as the things that I look on the water. The amount of biodiversity, just anything from like sea slugs to a crab, a fish, an octopus, a pyrosome or a jelly or just a sea lion or anything that goes by. It's just, you know, the detail that you can see on the water because everything is a little bit more magnified. And the reason and purpose of this creatures is just mind-blowing for me so I am very excited to find just whatever is going to be at most of the time probably I'm going to say 95 percent of the time I find something new that I've never seen before and I can't wait to come back and open my camera and see it in a bigger screen and then sometimes you end up finding more things or things that you didn't see in the picture that and now you have a reason to go back and find it again <laughs> and do it again so it, it is you know the whole teaching is and, and doing classes is a little bit more of a passion i have for sharing this beautiful sport which is scuba of seeing things underwater the the most diversity that you can find in a small area versus going like hiking. You can hike for miles and you're probably gonna see like, oh, I saw a couple of birds and there was like a rattlesnake or something, but you're not gonna think, you're not gonna see how many things you saw in one little spot from all the little fishies and creatures that are there. So it's like really humbling to see them and to know that some of them are like used to you and they're not like just going away. They are very curious about you. It's humbling because obviously we're, we're humans and, and we've done some damage to this world. And I feel like it, this creature is still coming to us. It's just kind of like, ah, I got to do something to make it better for them. I got to do something for the ocean. I got to do, I got to bring these images and put them out there and make sure that people see what's underwater. Maybe they get curious too, and maybe they start diving too. And then everybody's going to be taking care of the ocean. So that's kind of like the reason behind it. Yeah, I, I get the, and that's one of the things about uh, La Jolla Shores is obviously we, there's so many classes and people, you know, starting off their scuba diving experience there and they go out and they go, oh, it's just sand. It's so boring. Um, and now that I'm doing, you know, the photos, I come out of the water. If someone's asking like, did you see a shark? I'm like, well, yeah, I saw a horn shark today. And then I, I show them photos, you know, and then they're always like, wow, it's so colorful. You know, they're, they're just not used to seeing, they think it's just this dark expanse down there. Even the divers, they're surprised when you come back, you have these, you know, bright orange photos, you know, not of just the Garibaldi, which is obviously bright orange, but, you know, other things like the, the nudibranchs and the anemones and stuff like that. So it's, it's, uh, it's always great to share that with people. So, so with that, I would like to invite you to start your presentation um and <laughs> and then so yeah and and as everyone should know by now we are not professional like 
broadcast people. Um, so there's always technical difficulties, <laughs> but we work with it because we're, you know, we're divers, we're, we're enjoying our time talking about diving. All right, so let me do my first attempt to share this with you. So uh, slideshows, they're from- Oh, did you uh, not do the share portion of the screen? And no. Oh, okay, okay, that's what you're doing, okay. Yes, that's what I'm gonna do right now if, if that's okay. And I, I close everything else so no, we don't get any bothering email like notices and stuff. So here we go. Hey guys, so I want to talk about reef and I'm just, I feel like very lucky to be able to do this because about two years ago, I just love fish and I love taking pictures of fish, but I didn't really know about reef. So I joined it because I was interested in knowing exactly what it was that I was looking at. And so reef.org is an organization that's been running for a really long time. They're based in Florida and it's free. And it's kind of like a way to become a citizen science. Another um, thing about me is that I, growing up in La Paz, Mexico, I really wanted to become um, a marine biologist, but I couldn't because my mom said no. <laughs> so, sorry, I gotta put it out there. She said, no, she said it's gonna be really hard. And she was very concerned about that choice. And so she encouraged me to do something else, which I ended up doing, but, uh, I've always had in the back of my mind, like, wow, like, what would it be if I ended up chasing that? I, you know, with the career of diving I have and stuff, it will be so cool to do that. But Reef had definitely uh, helped me with that because now I feel like I am making a difference and I am just looking at fish and like submitting that data and all that stuff. So it's really cool. So it is a volunteer. Um, fish and invertebrate in this case here in San Diego and in the colder regions, you're gonna be able to add invertebrates to your uh, surveys. In the warmer regions, you're just gonna be working with fish. Um, also, it is, like I said, it's, it's an organization, it's free and you can just do your surveys if you choose to to do them on your dive so you can dive with purpose all the time so it's really cool they have some really awesome projects um uh, like the grouper moon project where they were checking on their spawning uh features characteristics and, and other things and they were just kind of like bringing the research if you've been to bahamas you've seen this grouper it's amazing. It's beautiful. It's really, really pretty. And of course, it was like, in, it was very in the verge of extinction at some point. So they're uh, saving endangered species. It's really awesome. And of course, you heard about the problem with the lionfish, which is an invasive species in the Caribbean. And so they had this light eye on their lionfish derbies and things like that. And they started just seeing just progress in how the reef was getting better when you're diminishing the population of lionfish that, as you know, they eat so much of the like local uh, reef fish that are really important for like the health of the reef. In this case, all the wrasses that are cleaning the coral from like any kind of like, like little algaes and stuff that it grows up and stuff. And so if the wrasses are not there, then the coral starts getting like just kind of like faded because they don't get enough light. And then of course, everything goes upside down and we don't want that. So this is, this is something that they did as well. And then they have a marine conservation internship, which I love to follow on Facebook and Instagram because their interns are always so passionate and they're just sharing all the things that they learn and all the things that they're working on. So it's really incredible to follow that as well. Then they have, of course, you see in there the numbers, they have like over 150 interns since 1993, so it's really cool. Then the Volunteer Fish Survey Project that I'm talking about, that I'm so excited about, is the, the all of these like projects that anywhere in the world where you could be, that you can go scuba diving or snorkeling, just your head under the water, like, and looking at creatures, you can kind of like get the data. In this case, I do my data with just my camera and my dive computer. And some people do it with 
just kind of like a like like a like a slate and they're writing down this the amounts of fish or creatures they see but i do my data with with that just taking pictures coming back and checking and kind of remembering the same day writing it in my dive log and stuff like how what did i see and so you can for example in 2020 there were almost like 10,000 surveys i probably did like 200 of those <laughs> so very proud of that and it's just kind of like my contribution the submission of all of this uh like different things that i see the temperatures the depths i went the places and all that so they can have the data and why is it important to have data okay we're gonna get there so anyway so like i said divers and snorkelers are citizen sciences and then they they can submit data of what they saw and positive identifications only hopefully and they are publicly accessible online. So all the marine biologists and anybody else that just wants to know, like how many times have somebody see a sea turtle in San Diego, which it, we, won't, we won't ask Jack, but we will ask the reef and they will tell us in there because the data is submitted. So. <laughs> you know, what green sea turtles? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So. For example, if you see this map, it's really cool because you kind of get the idea of what you're submitting with. One thing that I found out or actually like learned recently is that, for example, if you see the map up here in the just Pacific US and Canada, the blue one where we are in this case, we are in San Diego right now. I was like so excited because I was going to go to the Coronado Islands and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to see some other kinds of creatures and I'm going to be able to log them. And then Coronado Islands, it's it's a little archipelago islands that is near the coast of Mexico, but it's still accessible through just this, a short boat ride uh, from San Diego in the US. And so I went there and I just did all my pictures and did all my data. And then I came back and I was ready to submit it. And I realized that as you see the Mexico, the Baja area, all the way down to like Panama, it is uh, actually considered the tropical Eastern Pacific, which it's bringing a different kind of fish and they don't, they don't want like the, the invert, inverts and things like that. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is a whole nother survey I have to do. And yes, they, the creatures were a little bit different. Some of the fish were more abundant and some of them were a little bit more from tropical areas like trigger fish and things like that. So that makes sense. Of course, it is kind of like where it splits and you're gonna have kind of populations from two different areas in one but it is an opportunity to learn about another area in the world where you can see fish. So it's really cool. So anyway, so we go to, I'm gonna show you this quick video. First, let me adjust the volume because, uh, okay, here you go. Let me actually a little less, because it's like really loud before I put it out. Ah! Okay, here we go. Still a little loud, but oh. it's okay. Okay, you may need to turn it down. I can't even hear you right now. Okay. Sorry. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> okay, we all understand there's cheerful music. <laughs> okay. okay, so yeah, there's cheerful music in the back. And so we see, for example, this lady is surveying with like the, the, like the slates, like I was talking about. I do it, like I said, with my camera and I just kind of like take pictures. And even if I'm not going to get a great shot of the creature, I go like, I was going to get like a memory shot for this because later on, I'm going to be going and surveying. And as you see here, there's like single, ab abundant, few, and of course, single is one, few is one, is two to 10. And abundant is just kind of like a school of sardines, like you can't really possibly tell like how many. And um, you can dance while you're doing your <laughs> surveys. So. And then you go home and the survey is like just really easy because they're already populated by region. And then you can just say, okay, did I see one or none or something? And then there's also special uh, 
features that you can add. And like you see in there, you can see the data of your year and just kind of get an idea of like how many dives did you have? What was the different temperature? What was the coldest temperature you saw What or you felt? And what was the kind of like the warmest and the time that you saw the sea turtle? And then you start seeing a pattern. So now I have, for like I said, for the last two, two and a half years where I've been uh, doing this, it's been really cool to to see just kind of like the the difference in between last year's at this time of a year the visibility and the temperature was completely different and then you start just building on that it's really cool okay so why would anybody do a survey just people look at me like what are <laughs> what is what is it what is in there for me so I say, of course, help citizen research and, re and, and, and resource management. And in this case, if I was in a marine biologist, which we already said my mom didn't let me, um, I would probably be wondering if I wanted to study something and you have to start somewhere. So if you have kind of like, if you're looking into sea green sea turtles, or if you're looking into Garibaldi's, or you're trying to study the leopard sharks or the taupe sharks and stuff, you'll probably need some background of like, when have they been spotted? What the patterns of the temperatures are, where you can see them, if they're eating or not and all that stuff. So with something like this, you can actually see whether there is a climate movement in the area or there has been or if it's a pattern where it's been normal like that. So it's important and I am glad, since I'm going diving anyways, I am so glad to be given this data to Reef so they can use it for anybody else that is studying it and then they can give us answers or help us be better people for the world. So why not, why not? And then I also learned on the way there. So, okay, so it gives you a purpose to your dives. So again, it's it's not like you were not diving with a purpose, you always are, but it really kind of like, if you already have the information, why not like share it? So it's, it's free, it's so cool. Um, then also the tracks changes over time, like I said, and then your dive log is actually online. So it's really cool to see. And it's a fun treasure hunt because sometimes you see other people posting things like I saw today, Jack posted that fairy palm and I'm like, oh, I must go, I must go see it. So Jack posted this beautiful, it's kind of like, a, it's a hydroid. And of course, I didn't know what a hydroid was like two years ago, except that now that I am so into this fish stuff and now I, I just know way too much about it, I think. But it is very uh, peculiar to the area. And, you know, we haven't, I've been diving here for like 12 years and I've never seen one before until like about almost a year ago. And now they're everywhere and there's a certain nudibranch that comes and eats it. And so everybody's going up to see if we get lucky to see that nudibranch on top of the hydroid. And we just haven't. <laughs> so we will yeah, continue. That nudibranch blends in. It actually looks like part of it. So it's, it's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah, I know. It's so beautiful. I saw a one picture from a few years ago and um, it, it's just, I don't know, amazing. Like everybody's dreaming about that, of course. So we're, we're, we're continue. We will continue. We will keep you guys posted. We'll tag you all. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> so again, that's the part of the fun treasure hunt. And then of course it advocates for underwater world because Everybody, you know, in the scientists communities, they're talking about like, we need money for research for like dolphins or for like, understand like chimpanzees or elephants and things like that. And nobody goes like the gobies, we need to know about the gobies. <laughs> so, so sometimes with information like this, you can actually come up and say like, hey, this is important. Like we noticed a change in this or that thing and maybe somebody need to look into it. So that's really cool. Um, there's several scientific papers that have been benefited from having uh, information data that everybody had like contributed to. Uh, is so far five scientific papers in 2020 using reef data, 112 papers over the past 30 years. And then of course, partnership with governments, agencies, uh, science and um, academic and institutional locals. So if you think about it, like NOAA has some information about, okay, so the temperature of the water had changed or, you know, the, the, the 
the swell just came up a little more this year or something like that. So they know about the water, but like knowing about the fish is like a whole nother thing that nobody could have like the resources to just pay divers to go and do it. So it's really cool when you as a scuba diver can share the data and you're, I mean, like I said, you're diving anyway, so might as well just uh, give a little bit of that to everybody else. So anyways, uh, other recent data uses on the Pacific coast is, I mean, they've been studying the sunflower, the sea star sunflower, and some of the diseases on the sea cucumbers and things like that. So there's a lot of other things that they've been using at that and some of the recent papers that they publish. And it's because of the people saying whether they spotted uh, creatures or if the creatures were in not in, in a good health. So <laughs> this is how it works. You just go and ask the fish how long you live here for. And <laughs> they tell you. <laughs> and okay, so how it works. Here at Ocean Enterprises, where I work, we host in this very nice classroom with the kelp and all the divers and stuff in the back, we host a free reef meeting every third Wednesday of the month at 6 p.m. by wonderful Herb That's how he spelled his name. <laughs> so, so Herb does here in the classroom and it, it's about like a two and a half to, to three hour meeting, depends on how much you interrupt him. And it's going to be really cool because you in one night can learn everything about the local fish and in another separate night, everything about the, the inverts. So um, after that, you can become a citizen science. But first, uh, before or right after that first class that you take, you should go right there to uh, join us. It's free where it's showing it there. And then you can register. So you don't need to be an expert. People was like, well, I don't really know if I the fish I saw was a Garibaldi or was a goldfish. I was like, well, <laughs> it's probably a Garibaldi. <laughs> Garibaldi is that orange fish you see in there with that vector from Jeff Haynes. Uh, that is a local California fish that it's protected as the state fish. And it's also just kind of like really pretty to watch because it usually can like it's just that the background is all green with all this like seaweed and like all those other things around and this Garibaldi is just like standing there like hi I'm so orange what's up it's like really really crazy anyway so you don't need to be an expert to get started you can record only the species that you know and these for example are really really easy like the Garibaldi and the and the uh, bad ray and some hydro corals and stuff you can get some books. I was just telling Jack, I always carry this book with me because I am normally really good with fish, but rockfish, oh my God, there are so many. And some of them look so similar to me. And I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna have to just check it out. And they're like, they're really not that expensive guys. They're like $30. And I know, I know what you're gonna say. I can just Google it. Okay, go ahead, I dare you. <laughs> Google fish with two eyes and the one stripe red in the, well, you never, I mean, you're just going to get thousands of images and you're going to be looking there forever. If you get a book or a small book like this, that has basically the condensation of the fish of the local area, you're just going to be like, oh, yeah, that's the one I saw. And then just there's more information about it, not just kind of like some guy posting it like, hey, I caught it and that was at the pier. And now you don't know anything else about the fish, like it's, it's rare or the behavior or the way they spawn or anything like that. So it's really interesting. Anyways, then there's also in Reef, they have like online uh, webinars, just like we're doing it here. So if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about them, they have them also free on Facebook, like they do. And there's archives that you can access, so you don't necessarily have to be a scientist or a citizen science. Well, you have to be a citizen science, but you don't have to be a, bio, a marine biologist to access this. This is free for anybody. If you have a kid that is in school that is trying to do a project or something and they want to know some numbers, it's so much interesting stuff in here that you can access. And they also... I mean, have these products, which if you want to dive with the slate and you're more of a, I'm going to write it down, like you can get slates, you can get some 
uh, volunteer fish survey project, like little fish cards and things like that, that has a little bit more of, again, like the, the fish of the area and it's easier to identify and find. So what do you have to do? <laughs> those, those slates, you can get those from the reef.org site, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so it's, and, and, and just so people know, it's like, it goes towards reef.org. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's not like they're out there to, you know. No, it is. I mean, it's to me, just, I see the, the prices and stuff, what they sell it, and it's actually really cheap for the great quality they have. And they are very useful. Like I do when I don't have my camera, which is unusual. And I have, and I, I'm, I'm actually like going for longer time. I definitely take the slate and it's easier to record that way because you can just move numbers around and just get like the right name of the fish and it's easier to do it. Yeah, that's, the slates are like 10 to $12. Yes. I mean, it's... It is pretty cool. <laughs> So there's few techniques, of course. You can do the roving diver technique, which basically you can accumulate the count while of the fish while you're wandering around. Like, like I started, when I started this program and I took my first class, I went out and I was like, I'm gonna see how many fish I can name when I'm, when I'm seeing them. And then I started just recording the ones that I thought like I saw, or in this case that I could positively identify. Then you can record only personal sightings. So for example, if I'm diving with Jack and I said, Jack, I saw a sea turtle, did you see it? And he's like, where? <laughs> then, <laughs> then Jack would not record the sighting of a sea turtle because he didn't see it. I, he's not gonna put something that I said I saw. Then, yeah, the, myth, the mythical creature of the green sea turtle in San Diego. You know, <laughs> I had someone else that kept telling them, no, 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 they're, they're not real. And yeah, I ended up like showing her one. So I'm going to have to do the same. Then, of course, when in doubt, leave it out. There's so many times where I have a blurry image and it's like, I don't, I can't tell if this is like a black rockfish or a blue rockfish or something. So I just not going to, not going to report it because then it will be false. And um, you can record you, whether like, you know, the presence, whether they were there or relative abundance of it. So that's really awesome. And like I said, you can do it anywhere. You can do it year round, day, night, boat or shore. What you can't do is um, do it like from SeaWorld. You can't be at SeaWorld and it's like, yeah, there's three dolphins here. <laughs> so, so it has to be, your face has to be in the water to be able to report it, okay? Then what do I survey? So all the fish, temperatures, like I said, you, I can either do it with my camera on my dive computer because I'm recording the temperature, the depth, and also select the, the list of invertebrates and algae or just a fish and start with only one fish. You can do that. And if necessary, add more as you're learning more about them. Then you submit your data right there on the website. And then here are the experience levels. So level one, novice. This is, you become level one the moment that you sign up for reef and you take your first class. And the requirement is to fog a mirror. So you have to be alive <laughs> to be able to do this. Level two, three, four, and five takes two surveys, 25, 35, 50. And then you become in the, from the, you go from the intermediate to the expert level. And of course there are some exams or questions, quizzes that you can do. And so you have to have at least 80% on the novice to, uh, to intermediate. And then of course, on the more expert surveys and level five, you have to pretty much know what you're talking about or what fish you saw. So 95 and hundreds. So, so it's, it turns into, I saw a fish that's not Nemo. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, I saw Dory and I saw the teacher and I saw like everybody else that was there and Bruce. <laughs> So if you want to study more, uh, the, if you actually just go into the reef website right now, you can access like several different cards, like kind of like this flashcards, but they're like free and available online. And there's also the color ID cards and survey materials, t-shirt gifts. There's all kinds of stuff. They have really cool 
uh, materials in there, and it all goes to reef.org. They're really amazing people in there. I will support them every day because they do an amazing job. Um, then there's, you know, teaching modules. If you wanted to, if you become to an expert level, you can also become a teacher. So you can actually teach these courses to your local schools or have like a little group of adults who want to learn about this. If you have a dive club and you want to just host one of these meetings and like teach them about it and talk about the creatures, it's all available in there for you to do at like zero cost. Like seriously, you can you can do so much with this. It's really awesome. And I, like we talk about, we have the face, the, I'm sorry, the difference to areas in the world and all of them have a Facebook group as well. And so if you're in doubt too, and you're like, you don't have your herb with you, which is my guru of the fish, I just gonna go in the Facebook group and post a picture and say like, does anybody know what this is? Or I'm thinking like, this might be this thing or that thing. Or if there's a new sighting of something that is unusual, they're probably gonna post it in there and say like, hey guys, keep an eye for these new like creatures that are here. There's some species that are invasive and there's some species that are just kind of like, um, just visiting, you know, kind of on vacation, like they came with the current and just like they came, they're gonna go. So those are more like um, exotic, they call them exotic, they probably have an accent too. So <laughs> they are, those, those are Facebook groups. So please take a screenshot of this if you're interested, even if you're not part of the reef yet, if you don't have a number, if you're not a citizen science, Take a screenshot of this and look for those names of your region and then join the group because it's super fun to see what's out there. I'm just people talking about your local creatures. Okay, moving to the next one. Um, join a reef uh, field survey. So you can do that as well. They have trips and do other stuff where, where they can get together and do all this together. And other than that, uh, these are some of the local creatures in here, some of the sea urchins and rockfish and just uh, key limpets and more rockfish. Rock fish. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. You're learning already. And there's actually two kinds of sea stars and one anemone, two kinds of different anemones in here and some sponges. So that in one picture, you're just getting a lot of creatures already, lots of data. That's a painted gremlin. And then you have your crabs in here. This is one of the crabs that we have local in San Diego. Sometimes we see a bunch of them. Sometimes it goes months without seeing one. And this guy in here, they're very grumpy. So <laughs> the sheep crab, that's another rockfish. And the nudie oh my god this is another local it's on top of a sponge so in there in there again you get two points for the creatures you're seeing and that is jack that hasn't seen a sea turtle <laughs> wait that's not a sea turtle <laughs> no no that's how that's your face because you haven't seen oh uh, i i got it <laughs> yeah like, everybody's talking about it and you're like me yeah <laughs> yeah Uber perfect like this <laughs> rockfish again like some sea cucumbers and you see in there you see a black eye goby with the iridescent little spot under its eye which is so pretty those are hard to get photos of yes then the uh bryozoa in there those that get eaten by some of the ranks too because they're delicious for for new breaks, not for me. It's just like they're so full of like every little square is like a like tiny little creature. So it's really cool. And that's also on top of some like strawberry anemones, and you see some coralline in there, and probably even kind of like the whole fast of a piece of kelp over there. It's really cool. Some more uh fish in here. There's another anemone, and you know, the little sand dabs, speckled sand dabs, which are probably the most proficient animal of that we have around. It's the one that you're always gonna see. You can always count on a sand dab. And kelp and some more uh fish in here. Anyways, you guys get it. You have it in your in your local area. Even if you see one, it's just better than 
uh, not seeing anything, of course, and we'll always go out thinking that we're going to see something awesome. And if you start paying attention and you get really close and you actually start seeing and understanding what these creatures are here for, it's pretty amazing. So, yay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's always good to know what um, you're, you're looking for because everything's, um, so go ahead, if you want, you can stop sharing your screen if you want, but it's up to you. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Where is it? I forgot. Okay, where's that? No, it's the, oh, it's right up in here. Never mind. Um, anyways, uh, it's knowing what is in the area really helps for finding things. So in general, like if you're traveling somewhere, if you know that there's a, if you're a nudibranch type person, it's good to know what is available in that area. You know, so so you know what to look for. Otherwise, you know, you're you're kind of diving blind. Um, wait, are you trying to? Anyways, um, so so with that, I know I've used this to kind of look at places where I'm going to go um, to know what I can look for or what I can see. Because, for example, as a local of San Diego, and I was diving with someone from, you know out of town, Florida or something like that. They come here, they don't know what they're looking for. It could be right in front of them, but because they're not used to what they're looking at, they may just totally gloss over and I go, no, it's right there. And you point your finger at it and they're still like, what are you talking about? Because it's camouflage. And the halibut picks up and leaves and then they're right. like, what was that? <laughs> right. You know, or they don't know to look for the angel shark and some of the different things. They they're just they don't have that ingrained in their mind what they could see. So a lot of times they just gloss right over it. So if you're traveling, this is a great way to find out what's going to be in the area. So you can kind of like pre uh, do your research for what you can see. Adjust your eyes to the new creatures you're going to see, and then you'll be surprised of what comes with that. Because when you're looking through the book or looking through the slates online, you'll be like, wow, like, I don't know, like this fish eats this thing or the, does this other thing. And oh, this is a male and a female. So I've seen those too, but I didn't realize it was the same fish. So that's really awesome. So the one of the questions that, that came up is, Yes, in San Diego, we have once a month, or was it, you said twice a month? Or is it once a month? It's once a month in um, Ocean Enterprise. Right, right. So once a month, we have a, a class going on for, that's um, taught by, by her, right? So are there ways to find out if someone else, like on the East Coast or the Northwest, do they have, is there a list of these classes available from the reef.org site? You can probably find out through joining the Facebook group and then just checking what, like who's hosting them because there's going to be different places. Like I know that there's somebody else that, that teaches this class like up three hours north or something. So it, and then of course it's not going to be on Wednesdays. So if you just join the local group and you ask, hey, like who, where can I join this class? They'll probably tell you according to the closest place where you live. Okay, so um, so I know that I took both versions of the class that were in San Diego. Um, I will admit that I went into this without doing the research ahead of time because um, all the materials were available online for me to look at and review. Um, I did not know that the test could possibly involve scientific names. <laughs> <laughs> um so my score on the test may be not so great but it allowed me to go out and go oh that is you know bull kelp or it's that's a you know a keyhole limpet you know I was able to see some of the things and recognize them based on their common names not necessarily their, their scientific name um so it it was great for me when I started out diving to know what was out there you know learn from the experts. Um, so I guess that's kind of the other thing is we're kind of lucky in San Diego that uh, we have um, scripts and just the scientific community here, you know, with the local marine biologists, because um, I know there's people here that specialize in just rockfish, you know, or, or different nudibranchs. And you're like, so you can just kind of like post that question. 
Um, so it's it's nice having that local community. Yeah. Um, and that was awesome that you had this in there for all the data, because I was thinking when you're talking about this, I'm like, going, wow, wouldn't this be great for um, kids for a science fair? Because um, now they can go and do some of the research on their own, but yet they can pull all this data from, you know, other people diving in the local area. So that's, that's a great idea for, for parents with kids, you know, the whole science fair aspect. Yeah, and also they can become citizen scientists themselves and like record what they see. So that's really special, like especially when they're trying to become marine biologists and they're <laughs> not going to let them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. that's. So in my mom's defense, like the, she worked in the fish and game department. And so in that time when I was looking into colleges, she met a lot of marine biologists and a lot of them um, had like rasta hair and they were completely sunburned with like cracked lips because they've been doing research in a camp in a fishing camp out there or something. And they will come in the office to ask for data, you know, like, hey, can I ask how many tons of sharks were caught this year? Well, how many accidental sea turtles were taken by the, but are being reported by the nets or something, you know? So they will come in and so she'll be like, oh Lord. <laughs> she could totally see me camping for three months with like dreadlocks and stuff. And so she she did not want that for me. She was like, no, 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 get something else. So that's- But, but yet you're still involved with the ocean some way. So that's great. Yeah, and I don't have dreadlocks. Look, I can, I can put <laughs> my, my head to my fingers. <laughs> Yeah, well, your heart's going to do what you want to do. You know, you just do what makes you happy. But yes, I, I ended up choosing actually physical education, which, you know, I love I love sports too. So it was really, really cool as well to have a combination of doing those two things. So when it goes to recording these, I mean, you, you show the different methods. Um, and I would have to say that having a camera, a GoPro uh, definitely helps because um, as you know some people say oh i saw this and then you're and then they go and describe it to you and you go no that's not at all what that was um so having a photo um definitely helps or a video so you can like then post it on facebook and someone tell you that it's no it's this variation of that thing and i i i, I love that because there's people out there at one seeing the photo um but to I'm um, learning all the time because there's so many different things out there and different variations. So having a photo or video really does help. Yeah, definitely. It happens to me all the time. Um, especially with nudibranchs. Um, sometimes they're so small that I can't see them. I just, I go, I think there's something there. I'm gonna take a photo of this and then hope it comes out good on the camera later on, um, wow. which, which has, amazing pictures and you're telling me that you were just guessing oh my god <laughs> um yeah and what that last camera do you use <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like that one photo that you showed earlier where you're saying that you know there's two different kinds of sea stars in there and some of the other stuff that's the other nice thing is if you're taking a photo you can go back and look at it later on and go oh i didn't even see the second sea star in there um so going down taking a video you know you can actually or photo you can see more stuff um because i know that there's a another project that's maybe not reef.org but um tracking different um species like the giant black sea bass um so if you take photos of them you can submit um your photos to that and so it's tracking where that giant black sea bass has been um you know because the ocean there are no borders um like in that map you know yeah. they can swim freely from you know here to catalina to wherever they want to go and so this is also a good way of tracking where these critters go i mean because i know right now was it two days ago someone posted a, a a video of trigger fish um at the cove right so it's that's not our normal native fish that we have in the area but for some reason, the water temperature is perfect for them to come from the south and have them in this area. So it's 
Um, yeah, I don't even understand that because they're from warmer waters and the water is so cold right now. So I'm like, what? <laughs> right. Well, that's it. It is warmer on the surface, potentially. I mean, um, one one of the things that people may not realize in in San Diego is uh, for the people who are watching from other areas, there's a huge canyon. Uh, was it the La Jolla Canyon or whatever or, or Scripps Canyon? Can. Um, it runs and it's like a thousand feet deep. So we have these huge pool of cold water that can just up shift well. up well. And then, so we can get warm surface conditions, but the water can be, you know, in the lower fifties or 52. So, um, so the water is generally cold in San Diego, but we can get some of that surface water flowing over the top brings in those other critters. Um, so it's like, I like the aspect of, be able to pull up your history of what you saw before. Um, I, I know I cheat a little bit. I use Facebook. Um, <laughs> Facebook reminds me a year ago, you saw this. <laughs> yeah. um, or, you know, was it six years ago? It was showing me um, some of the videos I posted of when we had the seahorse um, population in Sandy in La Jolla Shores area. So, yeah. So, that was exotic too just kind of like having the trigger fish they come and go with the currents and and at the time it was really cold too so i'm thinking it's definitely they probably are merging with some cold and warm current that is coming and they stay here because that's where they got dropped and then eventually the current will come back and go the other way and then they just head back out it's really awesome yeah, so, um, so anyways, I, I, I do encourage everybody to do this, um, whether it's to help out with the science part of it, or if it's just um, personal gain, as far as like your own knowledge. Um, I, I think this is a, a great thing. I mean, I, I'm not the best person at logging what I saw. Um, as, and as far as like submitting things on reef.org myself, but I use it as a resource. So I know what's a around. Um, so I think it's a great thing. So I know that I'm just going to kind of like throw out a, a side topic here. Um, I know you're involved with some other things and the uh, one of the other, um, I guess, groups or nonprofits or it's it not I assume it's not profit is the San Diego um, underwater film exposition. Um, yeah, the SD so so if you want to just kind of uh, briefly talk about that, because I know that I like seeing the videos of people from all around the world submitting these videos. I'm also part of a local photo group now where we submit photos. Yes. Um, so so how, what's your involvement with that and what's coming up with that just so people know about that? So the San Diego Undersea Film Exhibition, it's been going on for 22 years. Imagine back in the day, there was a dive shop in here owned by Chuck Nicklin, and he, which is a famous photographer and videographer. And he started it, people started submitting, they used to submit like a VHS, and then people would just sit down in a forum and look at these videos. And now it's turning into, of course, with the internet and everything, People can submit these videos for free in certain time, during certain time of the year. In this case, this year it was from March to June. And you can submit it for free. Like I said, uh, a video from anywhere, it just has to be 70% of it has to be underwater. But basically, you can be in Antarctica, or you can be in the tropics, you can be here, you can be in a lake, uh, as long as you're submitting something from underwater. But so it it is free and it is a tool for you to put your work out there and to just get promoted by the SDU facts. It's probably one of the biggest film festivals and of course, underwater film festivals that there is. We're gonna have uh, the 22nd uh, film festival this year in October. So if you want to know more about that, you can email me or you can check the Facebook page, uh, S-D-U-F-X. So that is where we're going to be posting when the next uh, festival is going to be. And you can check it out. It's like I said, you can watch it for free online. In other years, we've always done it at Qualcomm Stadium here in San Diego. 
But of course, with the pandemic, it was not allowed to have a big group of people coming and uh, watching this all together in a theater. So we had to do it online for the first time. And this year we're going online again because it was really cool to see how many people joined from so many different countries and how many people submitted from so many different countries. So I think we're just gonna grow into like towards that way to be more international. So it's very exciting. Uh, I, I've been there with them too for about two years and I joined because of course I love taking videos. I love scuba diving anywhere I go. I just like to make a story of it. And it's just kind of like part of like sharing the love for the underwater world. And again, the more people see what's underwater, the more curious they get, just like I got at some point in life. And then now you're part of it and you care a little bit more for it. And that's just kind of like the whole alter motive that Rocio has about <laughs> <laughs> about the, the ocean and just kind of like putting it out there for you guys. Yeah. So, I mean, and just so people know that you have everything from the professional National Geographic, you know, videographers to someone with a GoPro that goes out and on a vacation just gets awesome footage and submits it. And so you can get the full range. You don't have to be some fancy, you know, video person to get something that it just has to be you know, something that's interesting and good, and it may get picked to be shown. Um, so anyways, there's, I'm just trying to point out to everybody that there's a lot of resources out there for photo, video, fish ID, you know, get involved with, you know, your local dive community, get out there and dive, find out, you know, what's in your area, or find out, you know, what you can see when you go to somewhere new. I mean, that's, um, you know, if you're going to go from here to Florida, you're going to go die the Blue Heron Bridge. It's kind of nice to know what's there before you go there and you go, I don't see anything, <laughs> right? Because you just didn't know what to look for. So, um, so anyway, I, I thank you for being here, Rocio. I mean, this is great. Um, and sharing all the stuff about reef and the ocean and your passion with diving. Um, and just want everyone to uh, know that we are going to show, I uh, do another presentation next month. Um, and that one's going to be with uh, Bethy Driscoll. Um, well, she may have changed her last name now. Um, but she's going to be uh, talking about her, uh, the dive nanny part of this. So diving with kids and getting kids um, in, you know, diving, scuba diving. Um, and just another reminder also that the Facebook uh, video of this will be instantly replayable once we stop this presentation. It's also going to be available on our YouTube channel. So you can go back and watch this at any point in time. And as soon as we get done, I'm going to put up a screen that has all the different contact links um, that you can go to. We'll also uh, paste these into the comment section uh, so you can just copy and paste. Um, because I know this, that one of the ones is a little bit longer address for the, the reef course <laughs> at okay. Ocean Enterprises. Um, anyway, I shortened it. So it's, there's a quicker route to it, but it's still pretty long. So thank, <laughs> so, so thank you, Rocio, for coming out and, and sharing with us this month. Um, this is awesome. And I hope to see you out at the shores and to find those mythical you know, creatures <laughs> called the greed sea turtle in san diego as soon as the visibility gets better jack i will be like, i'll drag you there there we go All right. thank you thank you everybody thank you for submitting your data thank you for signing up for reef and thank you for watching this presentation i'll see you out there hey see you around next month okay bye